Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we are out in the garden because I've just picked up a very cheap and pretty dirty looking Dell XPS 430 PC. It cost me £40, roughly 50 American dollars and I have no idea what the specs are just yet so I thought we'd get it here, open it up and take a look at what it can do as well as seeing what specs lay inside this pretty cool looking XPS case. So this Dell XPS was advertised on Facebook's Marketplace as a quad-core PC with a 1GB graphics card and 6 gigs of RAM. When asked about the card, the seller just repeated the written statement and said it was a 1GB GPU. That can sometimes be a bad sign. Despite the dual-core sticker, I confirmed it was definitely a quad-core PC and went to pick it up. It was the cheapest system advertised as a gaming PC on the Marketplace within 50 miles. Inside, it was pretty clean clean and features one of Dell's custom form factor motherboards which may mean I can't swap it out for anything else in the future. The PSU is a 375 watt unit which even includes a PCI Express 6 pin connector so at least that gives me a slightly wider range of upgrade options. So let's get the graphics card out. On first inspection it appeared to be a GT520 but as I removed it my worst fears became a reality. It was in fact a GeForce 210 produced by the Chinese company Colorful. I'd never heard of them either but it seems as of 2015 they became the second biggest graphics card vendor on the market. So let's get this thing plugged in. What I love about these old Dell cases is that it's very sturdy and will do a good job of isolating a lot of noise. These XPS systems also seem to go for more than what they're worth on eBay here in the UK, just like old Alienware PCs. CPU wise we have probably one of the most common used quad cores around, the Q6600. The amount of these I've owned is bordering on silly. That is accompanied by a rather odd 7GB of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1066MHz as well as a fresh installation of Windows 10. So let's get testing. First of all I ran Cinebench R15, the Q6600 scored 242, now out of curiosity I wanted to see how that compared to a modern budget quad core like the Ryzen 3 1200 and whilst it came nowhere near as expected there was just one point in it when two of the Ryzen's cores were disabled. Not really relevant or particularly useful info, but I found it interesting nonetheless. Moving on, and I just had to see what our newly acquired gaming machine could do, and thanks to the included Wi-Fi PCI card, I jumped straight into some online esports action with CSGO. The 210 just can't handle 1080p, so I stuck to 720p throughout. Counter-Strike managed 30 FPS on average, but the frequent drops to the low 20s pretty much deem this title unplayable. I've had far worse experiences though, that's for sure. During the creek level in Left 4 Dead 2 at the low settings, we saw a healthier 35 frames per second average. This was also more consistent and there weren't too many drops in performance here. The little 210 is maxing out as expected but it's hanging in there. For a laugh I tried what I've personally coined as the most unoptimised game of all time, Saints Row 2. The sun came out and caused a bit of a bad reflection on the screen here but I would be thankful for that as you probably don't want to see what's going on on the screen. Avoid this unless you install the performance mods first. In Team Fortress 2 I had a delightful experience but the figures are based on this very full match. This inside level really helped out our frame rate but there were certainly a few frame drops to speak of but nothing major that put me off playing this game. Finally it's Overwatch, at 720p with 50% scaling we saw a 27 FPS average. This game doesn't support DX10 but luckily it does support DX10.1 which is what this card supports up to. The experience wasn't great but some of my favourites ran acceptably well with reduced settings and whilst I'm not sure you could refer to this as a gaming PC, it certainly has the potential to become one so I'll be doing just that. Not to mention these old XPS cases look pretty cool as well. So guys, thank you for watching today's video. I do have future plans for this XPS system. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.